Hey everyone, and welcome to our little channel chat. You're watching the Ether Hub and what we'd like to call the Around the Ether Cooler. Of course, I'm being joined by some of the other members of the Hub, that being Nizahone and Nicole, aka Bad Wolf MTG. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. So, of course, you guys already know what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Modern Masters 2017. So, just to start things off, um, let's go around and talk about some of our favorite reprints of the set. Nicole? Do I really need to tell you? <laughs> I, I, have, I, have a, I have a good Are guess. Are you sure? I have a guess, you but go, a good... go ahead and uh, explain explain your pick real quick. Snapcaster Maid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a blue card. Um, Goblin Guide. Goblin Guide is my favorite card in this set that's been spoiled um, because it's going in my new modern burn deck, and I'm so excited to play with it. I love me a hasty tutu for one mana. Nope. In red. That's it's certainly a good pick. What about what about you, Nizahan? Well, I don't know. I mostly play limited these days, but I'm pretty happy to see a lot of cards like Gristle Brand uh, being printed, cards that see play like everywhere. So even though this is Modern Masters, that's a card that people in Legacy, people in Vintage, even are going to be happy to see reprinted because people play them in play him in uh, recursion decks everywhere, basically. And like Abrupt Decay, cards that are just like stupid expensive. Tarmogoyf for a third time. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to see all of those, really. In terms of Limited, I'm most excited to have another opportunity to draft Intangible Virtue um, and just make a bunch of creature tokens. But, uh, yeah. Uh, as for me, uh, I can't I can't pick a single one. So I'm going with the all-time classic combo of Restoration Angel and Thrag Tusk. I just love, I love the Blink effects. Uh, they have a, a number of them coming in Modern Masters 2017. Mm -hmm. And it just, it pairs so well with Thrag Tusk. It's just amazing. You get so many tokens and so much life. Not to mention they were in a standard deck of mine back then. And I loved playing them, you know. And uh, so I'm glad to just see them back. And I hope to get a box and be able to draft both of them, even though that's... Uh, probably unlikely in a draft situation, but <laughs> it's, it's a dream it's of mine. It's not super unlikely to get to draft Thrag Tusk in other ways to blink him, though, That's because there's tons true. of them. That's very I true. Made, I made, it's not up yet, I guess it will be by the time this video is up, but i working on my archetype guide, and for blue-white, uh, it's, you know, all about blinking, and when I was talking about the rares, I just threw Thrag Tusk in there, even though it's not blue-white, because he's obviously the best thing to blink in the entire set. You may, if you see him, you should be splashing green for him, because oh, he's certainly. ridiculous when you're blinking. Certainly. So. Yeah. Um, but, um, have you guys... Just a random question. Have you guys pre-ordered any Modern Masters 2017? No. I am so sad. <laughs> and I, I only pre-ordered I only pre-ordered two packs for Cracker Packs on my channel. So it's two not, packs. Not a whole lot more. No. I'm planning on doing most of my modern masters on Magic Online. So I mean, hey, I'm I'm right there with you, but um I I haven't uh, I haven't um pre ordered any myself. And I mean at this point yeah, the price is there. Yeah. If you if you missed the pre order and you didn't lose your pre order yet, you know it's cause... a bit late. It's a, yeah you're, you you missed a bus. Yeah, it's 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 already up to to two forty a box in some places. Um, it's it's gonna it's gonna go to MSRP and it's it's gonna it's very it's gonna be a very expensive set. Yep. So for sure. Yay for singles. Pretty much. So the only good thing, well, not the only good thing, but uh, the main benefit is, of course, all the reprints and hopefully the dropping of prices for some of these modern staples. <laughs> yeah, they'll drop, based on the past, they drop for, you know, a few months and then they usually rebound is what's crazy. But Yeah, that's... So if you really want to get in on cards now, everybody, like Nicole Bile, your Goblin Goldfish. guy... As two as two possible. months to six months is what MTG yeah. Goldfish oh, said, what they said, so that's that's go. what I'm going off of. Oh wow, that, they would know. That's that's the way to do it. Yeah, and um, apparently from a lot of people that are ordering sets, they're, they're printing a, a fair amount of uh, of boxes. So there's gonna there's gonna be um, the quantity is gonna be out there. The cards are gonna be out there for purchase. Um, so hope hopefully think... it's gonna be it's gonna turn out good for everybody i think it will sort of help too last time they're not doing it this time it was kind of cool that they did it but last time with modern masters 2015 there was actually three grand prix that were modern masters 2015 limited oh really? remember like tarmago tarmagoyf gate and everything where the guy took a yeah. foil tarmagoyf oh, and yeah. freaked out about it yeah that was and this time they're not doing that and i don't know how many 
boxes and cases of cards are necessary right. for a modern Grand Prix. I don't know if they sort of had like a separate stock for that or if now right. there's going to be more in circulation, general circulation, because of no Grand Prix. But yeah, I've everything I've heard makes it sound like it's more circulation than we had last time with Modern Masters. So. And but But even in the last Modern Masters, I thought they printed a little bit too much um because the prices were, were so high yet there it, it wasn't a limited quantity not really and i, I always i always felt it was kind of kind of shady that they printed so much and they live in a run uh but at least they're a little bit more transparent with uh with this set we we know what we're getting um yeah and, well i mean as soon as the cars were spoiled the prices skyrocketed but. Oh yeah, they they killed it this time. People were pretty disappointed with the last Modern Masters, and yeah. they just card after card, spoiler after spoiler. It was like, they really, you know, was... got got the fetch lands, mm -hmm. and then you have oh, Lily... right, damn, like everyone, and then Liliana and Snapcaster Mage and damnation. Abrupt Decay, yeah. Damnation. It's just like it's it's amazing. Um, yeah, I remember um, when they released the package art, um, just a couple days before the massive. Uh, Spoiling right. of all the cards. I Can looked you at them. Say troll? Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I was. I looked at them. I was like, "Oh God, please, wizards, don't do this! Don't, don't do this!" Because you know <laughs> the Domi Ray was on it, and I was just like, eh. "And we <laughs> assumed that was Snapcaster Mage on the box art, but we couldn't be sh we couldn't be sure." No, uh, it turned out it was Snapcaster, of course, like everyone thought. But still, it could have been anything. Uh, but but the characters that they showed on the packaging art <laughs> was not. Um, you know, it, it didn't really appropriately display the the scope of the set. Um, Gristlebrand, Gristlebrand is probably a good one, but yeah, it, well, it's a good, yeah. it's good, but it's not, it's not like but modern that, that master. Makes it sound like it's like the showcase. Of yeah, modern yeah, masters. That, Daddy. That's what I was. That's what, that's what exactly what I was yeah. thinking. Like, if Gristlebrand was the showcase card for Modern Master Seventeen, I, I would have been a little disappointed. Uh, you know, yeah. would have been, a, it wouldn't have been as exciting as it is now. But uh, luckily, they were keeping a lot of things under their sleeves, and uh, yeah, really, really yep. showed off an amazing set. Yeah, looks fun for limited too. So, and that's they always try to push that with these master sets, and uh, so I'm looking forward to drafting it a few times at least. It's a little expensive yeah. to draft a ton of, but what, <laughs> what is what is the going price for um, Modern Masters on Magic Online? And does it change? Does it fluctuate with it the market? It does change. It uh, it doesn't fluctuate with the market. I they've probably announced it, but I haven't looked at it yet. But I remember last time it was, you know, it's it's not, it's something like twenty tickets or twenty four tickets instead of the usual like twelve or fourteen, okay. because yeah. the packs are more just more expensive. So right, it's it's more expensive, yeah. but the expected value of your packs is also way higher. I mean, there's uncommons <laughs> that you can open that are worth like seven or eight or ten tickets. So it's yeah. Uh, there's you a, can there's make a, a lot of it back just drafting naturally. So yeah, there's a couple even commons. If you don't do well. There's a couple commons in this set that are worth some actual money. You know, for now. <laughs> for, well, yeah, for, for for now. They probably won't be for a long time. The commons no. there will definitely be enough circulation of them around to tank those prices. I would think. We, yeah. we all we all know the most ex the most expensive common, uh, Kraken Hatchling. The zero four. Yeah, one. you know that's that's my go to pick when I'm when I'm drafting these modern master sets. Um, the zero ones for one. You know they're just so clutch. Uh, pack one, pick drafting. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know one thing that's cool that they made sure you can do in drafting though it's not very likely is they have the gristle brand gifts ungiven unburial rights combo and you can draft it. So <laughs> and nobody else is going to really be after gifts ungiven or unburial rights. So or if you gristle, gristle or brand, gristle brand for that matter. He's awful unlimited from what I hear. Um <laughs> yeah, no I no. I think the blue black yeah, I think he's definitely hard to cast, but I think the blue black <laughs> can get there. No, I, but you can reanimate you can reanimate him in this format and that that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah, you can. That is that's there, re that's really cool. There's actually. two different cards that can reanimate him, but in burial rights plus gifts and given plus gristle brand is like the the most messed up way to do it because you just gifts for those two cards and burial rights and gristle brand and your opponent can't do anything about it. They put them both in your graveyard, and then you get Gristle Brand in play for four mana. <laughs> listen, listen Nizan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer you a contest real quick. Okay. If you manage to pull that off in one of your videos, I will buy oh. you, I will buy you a box and send it to you. Oh man, that would be that's that's I'm down for that. I. <laughs> 
I if I if I first pick a gristle brand, I'm gonna try pretty hard for that. I just have to hope Gibson Given got opened. And burial rights probably will, but Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. down for that. I mean, I'm, chances, chances are it's not going to happen, but you know. Oh yeah, but hey, the offer is there. Don't let me forget it though, because I, <laughs> I will forget. But uh, I will remember for you. <laughs> we have we have there a we, we have a witness. It's okay. There, that's true. Me and everyone on the internet watching this video. Yeah, all eight hundred of them. Anyway, <laughs> uh, um, so more <laughs> more modern masters stuff. Uh, do you guys have anything specific? Uh, that anything specific about modern masses that you guys want to discuss? I like that instead of the usual like going deep on ten different color combinate color pairs, they only really went deep on five, but it made the synergy so deep in those five. Like you know, you've got black red on Earth and blue white blink and green white populate. The synergy is so deep on those like five colors they really pushed that it's going to be really fun to draft and multiple people at the table can be in the exact same archetype there's enough cards to go around yeah I'm... i do kind of wish one thing i wish they had was a tribal archetype like elementals was pretty fun last time around um, yeah. there's no tribe no real tribe there's a little bit of a spider synergy that's about as close as you get hey there's uh, um spider synergy. I, I know, I mean, obviously you can't consider it a tribe but tokens Tokens, right. they definitely got a lot of support. Oh, yeah, Masters. tokens. To yeah, the pop green-white populate and red-green tokens and Naya tokens, all three of them together, looks super powerful for limited. And, and just intangible and, virtue alone. it's Intangible virtue and guys' anthems. So you have two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that can hit your whole board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, I remember I remember back in the day, I did have a uh, populate deck with Advent of the Worm, which I'm kind of surprised was reprinted, but obviously it goes with... Uh, it's just it goes with it. Yeah, it goes yeah. it goes it goes well with that. Um It's super good with populate. That's one of the best things you can populate. <laughs> yeah. That's very, very, very true. Um but they could have reprinted um Worm Coil Engine. Hmm. I think they wanted to focus on the color pairs. Plus I think wasn't There's... oh wait, we're we're, we're in our mind. I, I was gonna say Worm Coil Engine got reprinted last Modern Masters, but it was actually just a, a masterpiece. masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It's uh there's also like almost no artifacts in this, which is kinda kinda refreshing after all the Kaladesha have been drafting and Ether Evolved, oh, and it's man. just like all there are is signets. And that's pretty much it at common and uncommon. Uh, Basilisk what, what collar. Is... Basilisk collar. Oh, Graph yeah, Digger's Cage. A... There's some rares. Basilisk Collar you can do some silly things with, of course. Like with yeah. Vithy and Stinger, you can just kill their whole board. You know? I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing card. It's an amazing equipment. Yeah, it is. Damp, but yeah, and then you have Damping Matrix and Graph Digger's Cage. The cage is actually going to be playable and limited because of the Unearthed deck, but you know, it's mostly there for for the people need it for modern, real modern. Yeah. Yes. Not, There's not, constructed not, I mean, folks over here. Yeah. <laughs> not every card reprinted in Modern Masters is designed to be drafted and be completely synergistic synergistic with us oh i know color, you know so that's why they printed pyromancer ascension too which is completely useless in modern i mean in not in modern no not in modern, <laughs> not in modern but in limited basically yeah you know so also if you can pull off a cruel ultimatum deck that would also be oh awesome. yeah that's the other that's one of that is one of my one of my favorite cards. I just made a top ten favorite cards list, and it didn't make the list, admittedly, but it's up there. Top top twenty five, maybe. I like Cruel Ultimatum a lot. It's, uh, it's just very, silly. It's very strong, but so difficult to play. Oh, it is. But if I if I open one, pack one, pick one, I'm taking it and oh. trying as hard as I can. <laughs> you seriously, I, you would just go for it? I would. I mean, if I were at like a pro tour, would I go for it? No. But if I'm recording a video or just playing for fun, yeah, it's like one you of the most. Gotta go for it. It's one of the cards that feels the best. Have you ever cast a cruel ultimatum? Like... Never in my life. Well, then you don't know. That's that's <laughs> what it is. You you have to cast one, and then you you'll be like, man, I gotta do that again as I'm, soon as possible. I'm obviously living a deprived life now. I, I need that's to. Right. This is this is my dream now to go do that. It's just one of those cards that when you cast it, like your opponent can't win and. And you have to work hard to cast it too, especially in limited, where you have to assemble a mana base that can actually support it. Yeah. So you feel yeah. you feel fulfilled too, and you're like, yeah, cruel ultimatum. You know what? Uh, you know what other card that you can play that literally will win you the game as soon as it hits the board. In Modern Masters, Wall of Denial. I'm telling you, I I don't care. Like I don't it, I don't care. You don't need to have high attack to win the game. Shroud, fine. Eight, yeah, no, eight, it's eight, uh, that's true. Eight it's toughness? a legit limited card. I don't usually like walls in limited, but it's legit. Like, no, 
It, it blocks everything. Your opponent... Even... It can block Gristlebrand. Yeah. Okay? So, <laughs> it can block Gristlebrand. And... I think it can block literally every creature in this format, at least with their base power and toughness. So that... That's... That's worth something. And, and it's... It's only three mana. It's... It's... It could, it's... The best wall. It has to be the best wall. They printed two pretty good walls. They also printed Wall of Frost, which is yeah. also quite... No, this is... This is stupid, of course. But I had a wall deck back in the day... Because uh, everyone has to walk down that dark path and experiment mm. a little bit in magic, and that was my that was my time, my time of experimentation. It was a wall deck. I had wall of frost. I had wall of denial, and uh, I lost every game. But <laughs> you know, it was it was still fun. It was still fun to play. Did you have like uh, Rolling Stones in it or Dorian? Yeah, I had a. Or... I can't remember. I can't remember the exact deck list. It was a while ago. But uh, yeah, I had I had a bunch of bunch of that stuff. Um, but but my favorites were just Wall of Denial and Wall of Frost, which I'm very I'm very happy to see printed in Modern Masters. Although you know it's not you know traditionally great modern card, it's amazing for a limited um, a limited play play run of this of the set. Yeah, and and I honestly think that um, it would do a lot of work if you drafted it early, and it, well if you if you got two of them. Yeah, no question. It would be great, but <laughs> if you have a control deck, both of those walls are incredible because yeah. they just they just make They're the game awful. go long. So. And us aggro players don't like that. <laughs> okay, first off, yeah, you aggro player, you 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 and everyone else who drafts aggro, <laughs> I swear to God, I di- I die so fast. I just like turning creatures sideways. It's easy. I don't think I don't think uh, any like pre-release or any kind of limited play, um, limited scene I've ever been to. I more than fifty percent of the players build some kind of aggro we deck, and I'm not particularly an aggro player, but uh, so whenever I go up against those cards, I'm usually dead by turn four, with no <laughs> way to come back. Where are your yeah. two drops, man? Gotta have two that's, drops. That's hey, I, hey, I, spa- I space out my my. Uh... Okay, look, I'm bad at drafting. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I draft, I draft, I draft bombs, and I'm just like, huh, this is two two for two. Get out of here. There are always, there's always there's an aggro deck in almost every format that can just kill you on turn four or five if they get there, and that's always there's one. I mean, I need the revolt. You can draft red or red white and just kill people incredibly fast. There's that card that makes it so... It's like Magmatic Chasm, except it can also blow up artifacts, creatures Ugh. without flying. Mm, can't block, I've died to that card. card. Yeah. I've been like, okay, this race, I've got this. I'm at 14, there's no way they can kill me. And then they're like, boom, swing for 17 because you can't block any of my creatures. And it's like, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> GG. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very demoralizing to, uh, to get schooled that quickly. Uh, yes. Believe me, I, I've, I've been there. So I feel you. Um, I'm also I'm also really excited about the um, just the miracle cycle being reprinted. They they were some of the most uniquely fun cards when uh, when they were in standard. Um, yeah, they bring they bring new meaning to top decking. That's for sure. Ex- ex- yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would. Okay. Even though you say there's no um, Grand Prix for Modern Masters, is that right? That's right. That's very mm-hmm. unfortunate because I would love to see some matches where people win with a a top deck, you know, bonfire of the damned or temporal mastery. Oh. You know, I, I would love to see that. That would that would be so. That would be a really like um, like, you know, a hype. What is it? A clippable Twitch moment? Is that yeah, what those are? That, that's <laughs> hey, you know the terminology. <laughs> it, it, it would it would it would be it would be very it would be the classic people, hype moments. And uh, people play Master miracles in Legacy, man. You could. You can just yeah. watch them, but they play blue white miracles. It's like all controlly miracles. Maybe yeah. a bunch of angel tokens, and you're just like whatever. Use their little <laughs> top and spin it. It's the worst. It's actually the worst games to watch, and it's not like you don't get like as <laughs> when the people top deck it, they know they're top decking it because they put it there with their top. You know, yeah, unlike in in other formats where it's just like boom, lucky. You know, it's way yeah. way cooler. <laughs> exactly. That, that, Luck that's... is better. <laughs> that's where you get all the hype from like what's where's the hype when you like the person two two turns before was like all right i'm putting temporal mastery uh second card from the top uh turn later okay it's here uh, and i win the game all right well and they use sensei's divining top every single turn and you have to watch them for two and a half minutes decide how they want to put the top three cards of their library every turn and so it makes legacy pretty difficult to watch so 
not so good for Twitch. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> legacy, legacy is definitely um, a very samey format. You, you see a lot of the same things, and uh, it, it, I mean, it, it, I I don't watch it because it's it's too much of the same thing, and kind of kills the enjoyment of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a little I'm... hard to follow too if you don't know all the cards and what they do. I've been sitting there trying to look things up, being like, "What's this card? Right, I've never seen it before." Well, what, I is, mean, what is its name? I can't see it. That's just a, another another example of um, mag- uh, of Wizard of the Coast not doing a great job telegraphing their their tournaments and and the play of of real life magic to a Twitch audience. And that's always I mean that's something that's always going to be a problem for Wizards. I do think that's a big part of why they've shifted towards all standard Pro Tours though, because standard you generally, know, yeah. unless something gets really messed up, is usually a pretty exciting format to watch. Like yeah. There's always an aggro deck, a combo deck, a control deck, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's just it's a, it's a smaller pool of cards. A majority yeah. of the people know what what cards being played if it's in standard, especially if it's and a bomb. these days these days they keep that stuff in mind when they print cards. And they printed Sensei's Divining Top. Twitch wasn't even like oh, anything, God, yeah. you know, it yeah. didn't exist at all. That was like 2004, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> They weren't thinking about it at all in terms of making it more watchable, but now when they print cards, they are so yeah. games stay more in, more engaged and interesting. Yeah, and they've been focusing a lot more on creatures because I think they feel that's a lot easier for newer players to get into. Is oh, you're tapping sideways and attacking. I get it. Yeah, the the amount of creatures with just you know format defining abilities attached to them. Is in, it's it's been going up at a rate, you know. In recent yeah. in recent times, anyway. But uh, you know, I think that's a a good thing. You know, creatures were weak compared to spells for a long time, um, <laughs> and now they're they're starting to balance it out a little bit. You, know, you can you can argue that creatures are stronger now, which is probably true than most spells in standard. Mm-hmm. But in standard, yeah. In standard, yeah. But um. And then sometimes the strongest spell in standard is a card that's just good with creatures anyway, like Collected Company. So yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, may as well may as well be a creature anyway. So, yeah. but you know, as in in regard, we're, we're all over the place. We're already not even talking about monsters anymore. But uh, uh, <laughs> that's okay. It, 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 we're just having a conversation. It, it it branches out like a tree to different stuff. But um. Yes. So, what else? What else is specific about modern Modern Masters twenty seventeen? You guys have anything else to say? Blood Moon. I'm excited uh, for that. Uh, <laughs> Look, you're you're, when, when, you're when you're already playing mountains. This is right. This is this is why you know you're the type of person that people don't like to play. Yeah. With, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. But it's, we'll play. We'll play with you, you. but. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, Blood Moon and Ensnaring Bridge are like two cards. Those are the two cards in Modern that can sometimes make Modern games not very interesting to watch. Because Blood Moon can just, just just destroy some decks. And that's why it's so expensive and everyone who's read sideboards it. But, you know, it's not a lot of fun to watch when someone's just like Blood Moon. And, you can't you know, play they, anything. Yeah, yeah. they're just done or have to hope that they hit their sideboard card they can actually cast or whatever to kill your Blood Moon. And But it is obviously an incredibly powerful card, so... Oh yeah, it's um, it's it's got its merits, and it was definitely printed with the with with modern in mind as opposed to limited play of uh, Modern Masters twenty seventeen. Oh yeah, um, I guess it's pretty yeah, useless yeah. there. <laughs> it's it's not it's not completely useless, but it's definitely not a good pick. <laughs> no. Well, um, except for that, well, it's so much money that you. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so, of course, it, but... of course. Um, yeah. But my se- my second favorite reprint, actually, uh, outside of the Thrag Tusk and Restoration combo, definitely Damnation. Uh, it's yeah. it was a mm-hmm. card that it needed it needed a reprint badly. Uh, I think this was the perfect the perfect place to do it. Uh, they could have they could have done it in any other Modern Master set, honestly. But you know, it feels it feels okay here. Uh-huh. Did you see that they said it was actually in the card file to be reprinted in? Was maybe- it? Magic 2015 or something, or maybe Magic Origins, but they pushed yeah. it out because black was too strong at the time. So that's why it took so really? long. Really? In part, yeah. yeah, there was an article about it on the Wizards um, website. Um, yeah, I think Sam Stoddard did it. Yeah. 
He also, yeah. it was a weird article because he talked about that and then he was like, by the way, here are the limited archetypes. That's the main reason I read it. But I was like, weird article. Yeah, but... I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, here's, like here's, the, here's the history and legacy of Damnation. Also, the legacy archetypes here at the bottom. Yeah. But uh, that's actually crazy. I didn't know that. Um, Damnation would have been obviously very strong if it was in Magic Origins standard. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It they were thinking nice. about putting it in standard, though. That's what's crazy, but... I guess I, I guess I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it. Uh, look, it would have black would have been very strong. It, it would have been very yeah. very strong. Uh, I don't I don't think there's any way that you can actually reprint Damnation in standard and not have it heavily weigh towards black being a very strong deck. I mean, Languish is like nowhere near as good as Damnation, and it it played it was, a big role in oh, making yeah. black strong. So and it. Ripped all of my aggro decks to pieces. Yeah, that, it, oh, I'll do yeah. that. Now in this world of vehicles, though, it's funny because board sweepers and standard now. Meh. Planeswalkers and vehicles are everywhere. They're not actually that good in standard right now. It's very strange. I'll I'll, I'll give you that. I'm not going to say they're they're not good, but they're definitely less no. good when they than you know yeah. when they were originally printed yeah. out. Right now, damnation wouldn't be completely broken to be in standard. I guess is what I'm saying. But it would have been. It would have been with when, fatal push. Yeah. Yeah. It would have. Yeah. Black. Black but, would be very heavy removal. It would. It would be very, very, very controlly. But hey, um, you're right about vehicles. You know, they're they're not creatures for a majority of the time. Gideon's so. not a creature most of the time either. So yeah, he's in like something like ninety nine percent of all standard decks. And I'm right? and I'm so glad that Gideon's getting another card in Amonkhet. Let me just tell you how excited <laughs> I am for uh, another Gideon. I, I assume he's not going to be standard defining. He uh, might. He I might be. He might. Not. He might be. I hope not. <laughs> One thing that seems likely is that he'll be able to turn into a creature and attack things. Look, that um, that has been that his that has be been his standard. mo. That has been his <laughs> mo. I would be shocked if uh, if he couldn't do that. That that's just he's one of the he's one of very few planeswalkers who likes to get his hands dirty. So, oh, I mean, yeah, Thanks you're right. You. You're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, Liliana getting a new card. That's going to be interesting because she's she's a planeswalker who really has a mixed bag when it comes to her prints. Because, mm -hmm. um, of course, Liliana of the Veil is one of the best cards printed, period. It's really good. But then again, uh, some of her other cards have been very lackluster. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. She got Liliana of the Lost Hope or whatever recently, which is pretty freaking good and it's all over standard. But yeah, she, yeah. Could use, she could use another good Planeswalker. They don't you know all have to needs, be Jace. You know who <laughs> needs a good Planeswalker card? Chandra. No, that's true. Hey, oh, yeah. oh, wait. I remember when... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, sorry. I remember when Kaladesh was first getting spoiled, and um, her card was spoiled. And everyone was going nuts, like, oh my god, this is going to be the, the, the first good Chandra in so long. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, was, I was with everyone, but Me that too. has seen some play, but it has proven... I mean, even in modern, it's seen some play, but it's but it hasn't it's, proven to it's be... It's no Jays. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not, yeah. No, it's, I mean, you know, I could see the format getting shaken up enough by Amonkhet for that Chandra to end up being better, depending on what happens, but yeah, she's no, she is no Jace, and she's no Gideon, uh, or, you know. She's no Lily, yeah. I mean, even, yeah. even um, the new Nyssa has found uh, a home in a few well, decks, so... Yeah. But still. Hey, Chandra Flame, Chandra Flame Caller was pretty good for a while there in Standard. Yeah. That's, that's this you, big six-mana one who spits out yeah. elemental tokens. And yeah. Stuff. She's... Yeah. But in a world of vehicles and everything, she's not, not as good. Great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gideon I, Gideon can, can crew vehicles, so, you know. I mean, that, that's that's literally yeah. what that... It's, it's crazy to think of Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, and how his ability to turn into a creature has helped him in so many different decks as as standard just continues to evolve with new sets while he's still in standard anyway just that single ability to become a creature has allowed him to find a place throughout that entire time almost yeah yeah and it's and if you have heart of kiran in play he can crew two vehicles he can drive two cars at once See, yeah which that's is disgusting that, that's that's some skill right there yeah that's skill <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, I believe I believe everyone was was slightly disappointed when uh, 
the new Chandra just didn't pan out very well in standard. Because uh, yes. everyone everyone wants Chandra to have a good card. She's, a good card. She's, she's, she she's doesn't been, have any. That, that's very true. She's she's the planeswalker who just has not had a very very strong card. Mm-hmm. Never a very strong one. She's always had like rolled. She has had. I think it's Chandra. No, it's not Chandra. Firebrand, maybe the there was one that saw a bunch of play in standard or some in, play in standard. In fifteen, was it M fifteen? Chandra Pyromaster. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. She did I see mean, a lot of play, but once she wasn't really rotated like rotated out. Yeah, and she wasn't the card everyone talked about in the deck. Like Gideon is like Gideon is yeah. oppressive it's, in tons you're of decks. Yeah. You're playing white. Yeah, he he is and, he is the deck when he's in a, when he's in a deck. He is the deck in, in a lot of sense. But Chandra's always like, oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm on my home plane. I'm yeah. going to go hang out with my mom. Leave me alone. I mean, she melted two Eldrazi Titans, didn't she? Uh, and and what's, what's, very, what's, 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 <laughs> very, what's very funny is, yeah, she, she uh, you know, everyone was involved in the effort, obviously. But Chandra, with, like, the the boost by Nyssa, was the reason that the Eldrazi died, which is crazy to think of. But then... She just gets these Planeswalker cards. They're just like, you know what? I'm gonna make some elementals, and you know, how hey, about how about so dealing? I'm gonna protect myself. Yeah, I'm gonna then... deal. I'm gonna deal two damage to the opponent and nothing else. And, you know, it's just two is so much nowadays. Yeah, it, it's just it's it's crazy to think. Uh, you know, obviously the cards can't accurately reflect the lore all the time. That's it would be crazy to to think that. But um, even the card that depicts that event, Fall of the Titans, isn't. Doesn't see play. It was great and limited, at least. Like it was a yeah. bomb and limited, but in, it never saw play anywhere. You think the card depicting her destroying two Eldrazi Titans would just be like, you know, super yeah. powerful, but not so much. Yeah. But then we see storyline cards, you know, like Camera Cool and yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. they pushed it a little too hard. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. It's hard to find that happy middle ground. Yeah, <laughs> it's that me. That's very. That's very very true. Um, especially when you're trying to blend flavor and actual card mechanics and design you know but i i do i do feel like uh, wizards of the coast does an amazing job with um some of the cards um in regards to the flavor what the character is in their story and what the card actually does so i do i give them props i give them mad props they do try when they can to to inject that sense of flavor on a bunch of cards uh they they stated Hmm? yeah henny oh Oh, yes yes air flavor uh, that was great. Just just the fact that he was a vampire Aetherborn. That alone hey, hey, was, was, was good flavor. It was good flavor. Thanks. You didn't use the right pronoun. Oh, that my bad. Good. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, ever since Magic Origins, they've said they're emphasizing flavor more than ever before, and I, it seems to me like they are. You're probably a better judge of that than I am, though, Simon. No, yeah. Um, I, 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 <laughs> I definitely I see it. Um I will always say that there are the articles, the actual articles that they write about the storyline for sets, it's hit and miss sometimes. Um, the the writing is a little is a little spotty at some points, um, but the actual like what you see on the cards in regards to the story that's going on, it reflects it very well. Uh, even if the story isn't one hundred percent like, you know, it's it's certainly no uh, Lord of the Rings, you know. But uh, but but for do we uh, really want it to be Lord of the Rings though? I well, mean, I mean, they want to walk the... through a forest forever. We'd well, spend seven or eight blocks on Kaladesh if it were if it were Lord of the Rings. Uh, so. That's very that's very true. <laughs> but but they are trying to make it um, you know, it's a very obvious that they're making it very you know, giving it a comic book feel with the whole Justice League esque Gate Watch, and they seem to be unholyly unstoppable. Even against the greatest threats of the multiverse, we'll see about Nicol Bolas though. Yes. Maybe it'll be the end we'll of see. one we'll... of our heroes. Hey, I actually saw something. Um, it was actually hilarious because I got trolled so hard. Uh, there was a, a story of someone who said they, uh, uh, one of their friends, is a, a wizard's um, a story writer, and uh, he got access to some of the leaked story for Amon Ket, and he, he wrote out this uh, elaborate story about how. One of our heroes are going to die, but he's not going to tell us who. And they get resurrected through the help of um, Ugin, who comes. And, you know, it was very elaborate, almost real. And then at the end, they're like, oh, the power of the Gatewatch summons Stormcrow. And Stormcrow beats the hell out of Nicol Bolas. And I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> damn it. 
<laughs> oath, <laughs> oath of Ugin would be pretty cool, though. It'd be a colorless oath. That would be. Do we have a colorless enchantment? I don't know that we do. A so colorless that would be cool... enchantment. Do we? That would be cool. That is a good question. That There's no reason unique. you sh- you can't have one. I wouldn't think. But, but you're you're missing the the flavor the flavor point here. Ugin's uh, you know, he's being a, a big old douche dragon. He doesn't he doesn't want to help anybody. Oh, he didn't he didn't take the oath. No, nah, he didn't take the oath, and he okay. scolded the Gatewatch for killing the Eldrazi. You know, I don't know. He, hey, he doesn't... I'm thinking he's the bad guy. He's like Nicol Bolas, like, in disguise. Don't they, like, hate each other? Am I wrong? No, uh, yeah, I mean, just because Nicol Bolas killed him at one point. You know, oh. you know that's, water, you know. that's water under the bridge, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, it's just Ugin is, um, is a strange, a strange character, because, uh, he he's obviously trying to do what's best for the best for the multiverse at large in the long run since he's ancient and wise and all this kind of nonsense. Uh but at the same point, uh he's not realizing that like, oh hey, uh the Gatewatch just killed two Eldrazi Titans that have been just munching on planes for the past, you know, eternity. Maybe, you know, give give him a pat on the back and not scold him so much, but you know, that's what he's been doing. He's he's more of the uh the passive observer of events than anything else at least right now anyway that could change in Amon Ket because Amon Ket's that's a facing Nicol Bolas is a is a a huge story defining event I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna kill Nicol Bolas I would be very upset if they did but uh Ugin would have to be involved in some way I would imagine maybe they'll kill Gideon so he can stop having Gideon's so many Gideon Mr. Guys. Indestructible, though. <laughs> Just saying, it's gonna be he hard. He can be e- he can be exiled though. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's solution. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, I think we've got, we've gotten a little <laughs> off track. All right, so I think that's a, a good point to uh, to wrap this up, guys. I just want to thank everybody for joining us for Around the Ether Cooler. This is a fantastic first showing, obviously. Uh, let us know what you guys thought about the video and your own opinions on the new Modern Masters set and Modern Masters Dominaria, of course, in the comments below. If you liked the video, consider supporting the Ether Hub here on YouTube by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. You can also check out the channels of all these other talented YouTubers linked in the description below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time here on the Ether Hub.